Here are the video solutions for AQA Functional Skills Maths Level 2. This is Paper 1 which is the non-calculator section and this is March 2022. So let's uh, take a look at question number 1. Here are 9 numbers. Circle the mode. Well the mode is the one that is the most common. That's all you need to remember. If you remember it's the most common or most frequently occurring then this question is easy. 1 appears 3 times. 2 only appears twice, 4 twice, 6 twice, so the mode is 1 because it is the most frequently occurring value. Write this number in words. Okay, so we just need to remember that um, it's probably easier actually if you put commas in, they've put gaps in, uh, so put a comma in after every group of 3 when you're going from right to left. Now you just need to remember that the first comma represents the word thousand and the second column represents the word million. So the answer is 9 million, that is just 7, 7,000 and 65. And we're done. Work out 7.4 minus 2.137, so we're going to have to do some column subtraction here. The most important thing is make sure you get your decimal points in line. And if they're in line, then everything else is in the right place. So the one needs to be underneath the four. Don't try and put the seven underneath the four. Um, so we do have a bit of an issue here because um, we've got some gaps. So we need to fill them with zeros. Zero minus seven can't be done. So we need to borrow from the next column, but the next column is empty. So we need to borrow from the next column along. Four becomes three. So the zero becomes the one of 10. This 10 will now become nine so that this zero can become a 10. Sorry, by the way, probably should have put a decimal point in line in my answer box there. Starting on the right hand side, 10 minus 7 is 3, 9 minus 3 is 6, 3 minus 1 is 2, 7 minus 2 is 5. So the answer is 5.263. Question number 4, work out 50 plus 75 divided by 5 squared. So this question is testing our understanding of bid mass. Um, there are no brackets, but there are some indices. 5 squared, that means 5 times 5, which is 25. So the question is now 50 plus 75 divided by 25. So we have adding and dividing. We do the dividing before we do the adding. 75 divided by 25 is 3. So the question now is just 50 plus 3, which is 53. Write down 4 and 3 sevenths as an improper fraction. So how many sevenths is four and three sevenths? Um, so what we're gonna be turning this into, um, if you don't know what an improper fraction is, and a top heavy fraction, where the number on the top is bigger than the number on the bottom. So to work this out, it's gonna be four times by seven plus three. Four times by seven is 28. 28 plus the three is 31. So the answer is 31 over seven. Question number six, work out the size of angle X. So here we have angles around a point and angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. So what have we got so far? Now we also need to remember that this square here represents a right angle, so this is 90 degrees. So we have 116 degrees, we've got a 90 and we've got an 89. Let's add these together and then subtract from 360. Nine plus six is 15, five carry one. 10, 18, 19, carry 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. 360 degrees, take away the 295 degrees that have been given, equals uh, 65 degrees, so x is 65 degrees. And we are done. Moving on to section B, Jake's a member of a rowing club. Jake goes rowing at the club one morning. He leaves home at 7.30. It takes him 25 minutes to drive to the club. So therefore, uh, 7.30 plus 25 minutes means he's getting to the club at 7.55. It then takes him 45 minutes to get the boat ready and start rowing. So therefore, if we add 45 minutes to 7.55, that means he's ready to start rowing at um, 8.40. So 8.40 starts rowing. So what we want to know is uh, what the time is after he's rowed five kilometers. So how long does it take him to row five kilometers? Well, we know that speed is the distance divided by time. And when you've got an equation where something equals a fraction, you can just swap these two elements around. So time is the distance divided by the speed. 
So the distance is 5 kilometres, so the time is the distance of 5 kilometres divided by the speed, which is 10. 5 over 10, or well, that is the same as a half, so the time is 1 half, so that's 1 half of an hour, which is 30 minutes. So if we add 30 minutes onto 8.40, that takes us up till 9.10, so the answer is 10 past 9. Okay, part B. Uh, Jake wants to row 60 kilometres in a week. He rows 7 kilometres every day for 5 days. So we need to be thinking now, well after 5 days he's done 5 lots of 7 kilometres, which is 35 kilometres. Um, so what has he got left to do? Well he's got 60, take away 35 kilometres left, which is 25 kilometres. So what fraction of the 60 kilometres does he have left to row? Well he has 25 out of 60. But this fraction can be broken down because we've got two numbers that are both divisible by 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5, 60 divided by 5 is 12. So he has 5 twelfths um, of his um, mileage goal still to go. 12 rowers take part in a race and Jake records their height and the time um, on this graph here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so um, there are two missing and we need to plot these. So we have 170, 110, so 170 height up to 110, so that is going to be plotted there. And 185, which is here, 99. So uh, here's 100, so 99 will be just one less than it. So we've done that part, so we've plotted the two extra points, but now we need to use the scatter diagram to estimate a time for a rower of height uh, 180 which is here. Now what we need to do here is put in a line of best fit so um, let me just see if I can get a half decent line done. So what we're looking to do is to get a line that cuts through the, mi um, the middle of this data pretty much. It's, if I ask 10 students to do this 10 students might have slightly different line, 10 different lines and they might all be equally valid so there's no one perfect line. We're just looking for a line that generally cuts through the middle here trying to keep the sort of same number of data points above and below the line. So something like that is about right. Okay, let's get my pencil back. Okay, so now all we need to do is go to 180 and go up until we hit this line of best fit, which, well, the way I've drawn it, my line is a bit on the thick side as well, which is not ideal. Um, it looks like it's halfway between 104 and 103. So I'm just going to say it's 103.5. So um, that's going to be 103.5 seconds. But I'm sure in the mark scheme, anything uh, that is relatively close to that, I'm sure 103 and 104 are going to be acceptable. Perhaps 102 and 105 is also within um, the acceptable boundaries as well. So it doesn't have to be precise. So I wouldn't fret about it too much. So the key thing is just draw a line that cuts through the cuts through the data as as well as uh, as well as possible trying to keep um, as many dots as close to the line as you can so there we go 103.5 is my estimation